Hey there. This video is just going to be an introduction overview of the free synth Surge by Vember Audio. It used to be a pretty expensive synth, but at some point the developer decided he didn't want to work on it anymore. I think he's actually one of the developers of uh, Bitwig Studio. And rather than just kill the project, he decided to make it fully open source so that it could be developed by a community, which I think is really amazing. Not that many developers do that. There's a lot of older synths that just are great, but just get abandoned and could have been open sourced. So yeah, you can download it here. There's a uh, Mac 64 bit version, Windows 64 and 32 bit versions and a Linux 64 bit. So the first thing I'm going to show is how to make a super saw or hyper saw patch. First thing we have to do is we'll select oscillator one. Let's listen to it. So right now it's just a saw wave. Um, to do a super saw, we need some unison. So I'll turn up the unison count to six. That means there's six voices playing. It's already getting close. Can turn up the spread slightly. Okay, that's cool. So um, for a super saw sound, ideally we would want it wide. So there's a big difference between the left and the right channel. Um, I can go over here in the filter configuration to left, right, which will give me the ability to pan the two, the, the different oscillators. <laughs> So I'm going to copy this oscillator, go up here, copy, go to oscillator two and paste. Over here in the mixer, I'm going to unmute oscillator two, pan oscillator two to the right and oscillator one to the left. So this is actually just going to different filters, but with this filter configuration, we get a left and right pan. So that's great. You can hear there's a big wide saw sound. I'm going to add in a little bit of sub level on both of them because we want that lower octave. And I'm going to enable the, the, the last oscillator, put that right up the middle and raise the octave. Yeah, so that's a pretty nice super saw sound. Okay, so something else I'd like to show is just the basics of how the wavetable functionality works. If you go into your oscillator section right here, you can pick from a few different types of oscillator. So if we bring up wavetable, we have a huge list of uh, over a hundred wavetables. So what these wavetables are is if you pick one of these, it's a table of different waveforms that you can scroll through. I'm going to pick something that's a little less distorted. So we also have some other controls to shape the waveform. Some distortion. So any of these can be modulated. The way the modulation system works in this synth is you pick a modulator click it a second time and it'll bring up these little blue uh, things around the knobs or sliders. Now if I pull this, that's going to be what the LFO is doing. I'm going to put that on the morph. Unfortunately, it doesn't give a visualization of how the LFO is changing the wavetable, but that's okay. You can still hear it. 
Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show today is just how to make a quick kick drum patch. If I go to the patch browser and init, I can get an init sine wave. That's what I'm going to start with. Just tweak the amplitude envelope. I'll use an analog to get a bit of a punchier attack. Then I'll switch it down. I'll start one octave lower. We only have these two ADSRs, but any of the LFOs can become ADSRs, just like in CRM, if you're familiar with CRM. Uh, I can choose an LFO, go to envelope mode, and I'll attach that to the pitch to get the pitch envelope thing that we need for the start of our kick drum. Um, it's starting, it has sustain, so I'll get rid of the sustain and turn down the decay, and then there we have a, a pitch drop. I can change the shape of that with deform, take, make it more linear or logarithmic or exponential. This is the shape I want for a kick. So currently I'm doing the maximum amount of pitch modulation or pitch drop that I can have. But if I wanted the drop to be more, you can actually stack the effective LFOs and I can get more of a pitch drop than even the actual knob allows. If I copy and paste and apply that, it's now doing twice as much. I'll just change the shape of that so we have a more complicated relationship between the two. I can switch to FM mode. You can do FM with this FM section by routing these oscillators to each other. But a cool thing is that you can also do an FM mode right in the oscillator. It gives you two modulators with ratios. And it gives you a visualization of how that's changing the oscillator. You also then still have these freed up and you don't have the, to have them routed in the FM matrix there. So I'm just going to use that as a final step to give this kick sound a bit of a click. I'll copy and paste this again. And route that to the modulator amount. I think it was good where it started. <laughs> so yeah, that's a pretty good start to a kick drum sound. One other interesting thing to mention with this interface is you can set a zoom level. This, is, this was the way it started when I got it, but I found it a little too small. If you go to set the zoom to what you want, you can go again and set 125 as default or whatever you want as default and then it'll be like that whenever you open the plugin So there's still a ton more with this plugin you can do you can do feedback With some of the filter routings to get old-school analog filter feedback where you used to plug in the Headphone output back into the input of the synth. You can do that kind of thing here um, Like I said, there's the FM modes. There's tons of wavetables. There's lots of effects, which I didn't get into. So yeah, for a free synth, this is incredibly powerful. Definitely check it out. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.